everywhere in scripture you see the administration of God's mercy for running the delivery of God's mercy is brokenness please write it down brokenness is the name given to the spiritual state that any and every man must assume to be a recipient of God's mercy Psalm 34 and verse 18 Psalm 34 and verse 18 the Bible says the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart he said and save it such as be of a contrite spirit is that in your Bible the Lord it is impossible for him to be far from those that are of a broken heart and that those who will experience his salvation expressed as his mercy are those who are of a contrite spirit now scattered through scripture the way we study scripture as you know um the bible essentially helps us to know god by um, revealing three components number one the promises of god number two the principles of the kingdom what we call the mysteries of the kingdom then number three prophecies so every time you open your bible to learn god you find captured in scripture the promises of god a representation of the boundaries of his commitment to the believer because god cannot be committed to the believer outside of the allowance that scripture provides he is mighty and he is great but he limits his dealings with men to the provisions that scripture allows are we together now that means it is not just what you want that god does it is what you want that is consistent with the provisions that scripture allows and he has exalted his word even above his name so you find promises number two you find principles the modus operandi of the kingdom it gives you a capture of the ways of god the methodologies of the kingdom captured in stories captured in parables captured in similitudes so that when you study these parables and these stories behind the stories are a revelation of the ways of god are we together the bible says the things that are written are for time it says that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope are we learning tonight we're going to examine very quickly a story that captures, in my opinion, it is the most detailed capture of rebellion against authority and then how the mercy of God is administered. I want you to follow me very quickly as we go to Luke chapter 15 and examine a very popular story. We know it to be the story of the prodigal son luke 15 let's begin our reading from verse 11. the bible says and he said a certain man had two sons follow the story closely the bible says and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that fall to me and the bible says and he divided unto them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took off his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living there's no point to deal with this story and show you all the lessons that should be learned but maybe i, I should just take a few seconds to explain something this was the first decision he took outside the influence of his father and it was disaster that meant that all his results was credited to his connection to his father the devil knowing that his immunity and his strength was connected to his relationship insisted to dissociate him from his father and the first decision that he would take out of the influence of his father landed him in trouble same thing happened to abraham and lot god called abraham and the bible says and lot went with him the first decision Lot would make outside of the influence of Abraham landed him in Sodom. Hallelujah. Let's read on. Verse 13. The Bible says he went and wasted his substance with riotous living. 14 now. 
And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed with swine. Look at the gradual degradation, degradation and decadence that was happening to this man. And then the Bible says, verse 16, And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Next verse. When he came to himself. This is a very powerful revelation of what God put in men. The Bible never said the Holy Ghost spoke to him. The Bible never said an angel appeared before him. That means it is within the power of man to come to himself. You may not be able to help yourself, but you can come to the realization that you need help. Follow closely. This is the protocol of the administration of mercy. Please keep that scripture there. He came to himself and then he said, to who now? Himself. How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to eat and to spare and I perish with hunger. Can you see that sometimes hunger is a blessing because it sustains a unique ability to make you come to there would be no need for this kind of intelligent discussion if there was plenty. The Bible says he came to himself. Follow closely. Verse 18. I will arise. He's speaking to himself now. So he had that ability. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. It took a lot of thoughtfulness to get to that point. To know the extent of his sin. That I've not just sinned against you. I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Say brokenness. Everywhere you find the mercy of God administered, you always find a broken and a contrite heart. Please keep that story there. Let's finish up. It says, I am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. 20. The Bible says he arose. He would have thought to himself and remained there. It is within your power to come to yourself. And it is within your power to begin to take a step that demonstrates brokenness. The Bible says he arose and he came to his father. Watch this now. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had... There you see our terminologies again. He never said he had mercy because mercy always flows from compassion. The father had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Verse 21. And the son said to him, Father, can you see that he was really determined? He said what he said to himself, he would say to the father. I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called your son. In the presence of such welcome from his father, many people will keep quiet and not say what they said they would say. But now he said, not even your honor would distract me. I am that broken. I have to let you know that I am broken. 22. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. This is the character of mercy. And put it on him. Do you know he never said bath him? He said, bring forth, I don't care what condition. All that I need to see, I have seen. There is brokenness. Bring forth the best robe. Put it on him and put a ring, a symbol of authority. Put it on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill him and let us eat and be merry. Why? For this my son was dead. What was the father talking about? Dead? What killed him? When you read scripture, don't rush. A man is talking to a son who is alive. And hear what the father is saying. This my son was dead. That means you don't need to die to be dead. 
this my son there is a condition that is equal to death even when you are alive this young man satisfied that condition that the bible calls death what is it separation is that not in your bible that god's idea of death is not just cessation from living that once you are outside of your connection with your source the word abba means source sustainer defender protector once you cut away you are dead this my son was dead what was the death he left me and the bible says now he's alive what gave him life the connection hmm. he was lost and is found and they began to be merry are we learning tonight 25 now we're about to learn another lesson his elder brother was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and he heard music and dancing follow closely assume you are the elder brother and he called one of the servants and asked what what things what these things meant and he said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he was hmm. he was angry and would not go in therefore came his father out and entreated him what a good father we talk about the children and forget the father the father was good next verse and he answered and said to his father lo this many years do i serve thee neither transgress i any time at thy commandments and yet thou never gavest me mercy how could i have been so close to you as far as i'm concerned i fulfill the condition that would have made me a recipient of your mercy and as close as i was with you all these years in spite of proximity i never truly benefited from your mercy you can be so close to the point of mercy but if you do not fulfill he made one mistake this was his mistake i have served you and i did not transgress it's called self-righteousness so he believed that i am deserving of your mercy by reason of my flawlessness he marked his script graded himself and demanded an award called mercy the father is about to correct the young man now are we learning now and yet you never gave me a kid that i may make merry with my friends hmm. but as soon as this thy son was come which had devoured thy living with harlots and had killed for him look at how he's complicated are you seeing the detail he's reminding the father in case you have forgotten let me help you understand the kind of person you are showing mercy to he didn't say one who was feeding with the swine he found the most dangerous part of the story and brought it before the father thou hast killed for him the fatted calf 31 and he said unto him son thou art ever with me and all that i have is thine look up please he said it was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again remember his definition of death now was lost and is found let me ask you a question how many of the man's sons were dead because we see that the results that follow those who die was bo on both the elder and the younger the only difference was that one acted out his rebellion and his anger by leaving the other one remained in the house but he was not broken you need to understand this when you understand this condition you will know why so many people you pray for and say lord are you blind are you not seeing this person and yet it looks like they cannot the condition for mercy is not service 
No, he was serving in the house. The condition for mercy is not flawlessness. The young man did it. The moment the son satisfied that condition, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, there is something I have recognized. My inadequacy. I have recognized my need for your influence. I have recognized that I cannot help myself. The father said, you've satisfied the condition. Stop. Believers, let me tell you. Herein lies the mystery behind God's supposed commitment to the life of others. And it looks like God seems to handpick a few people. And you are wondering, God, why are you investing your time, your attention, your resources on this person? And I'm there and it's as if you are passing me. And I'm a Christian. I, I'm a churchgoer. I love you. I love my pastor. And it looks like things are not working. I show you the system of administering mercy. When the strength of God comes and it finds strength, it will go back. The strength of God comes looking for brokenness. 